with the power of nature. Do you feel safe that uh, those tanks are safe from another earthquake, from a lightning strike, or from a tornado? Um, I don't have uh, such uh, expert knowledge about uh, the, um, the details of the tanks, um, but I, as I mentioned earlier, what I'm truly afraid of uh, is the groundwater. Um, as you know, Japan is a country with uh, a lot of rain. It's, you can even consider it to be a monsoon uh, country. And when we add that to the fact that we are a very, very mountainous nation, that means you have um, a lot of water always running underground to the ocean. Uh, when you look at the Fukushima um, the power plant, you see that nearby is a very big mountain range called the Abukuma uh, Mountain Range. And mountain ranges are always, as I said, source of water. Uh, and there's just a tremendous amount of groundwater always, always uh, flowing uh, very strongly towards the ocean. Uh, even uh, in our area, Tokai uh, Mura, uh, we have lots, it's a very flat area, but even so we have a lot of groundwater always uh, making its way to the ocean. But given the fact that uh, the special terrain of Fukushima encourages a groundwater, um, I know that at present the people in charge of uh, the Fukushima plant are saying that they will somehow stop the groundwater from getting into the premises of the plant, but I think it's an extremely difficult task. I frankly think it is an impossible task, and I think anyone who thinks that they can accomplish such things and conquer nature in that way is simply just full of themselves and just don't, and, and not really realistic. Um, and uh, yeah, I am, again, very concerned about uh, the groundwater in part because uh, as a result of the meltdown, we have this spent fuel that is just being abandoned and just being left there, and as long as it exists, it is constantly emitting radiation, it is constantly being uh, in contact with water, and you're always going to get more and more uh, contaminated water produced. So unless that spent fuel is uh, somehow um, taken care of, uh, you're always going to have this danger of more uh, contaminated water um, getting out. Um, yes, as you uh, pointed out, um, I believe that uh, the uh, life uh, span of the tanks is only about three years. I've heard that they were very sloppily put together in a very a short amount of time. Um, but even more than that, I believe that uh, this groundwater is a tremendous problem and uh, the idea of this contain, um, contaminated water reaching the ocean, I think is a very, very serious and frightening thing. Okay. Siegfried Niedl, freelance from Germany. Thank you for mentioning mention my country. It's a, it's a decision, decision of my country to uh, abandon nuclear power. Um, my question is, uh, you are against the nuclear power, but how is the a, a, a majority in your assembly in Tokamura and the population in, in uh, Tokamura, they are also um, a majority against nuclear power? Um, in regard to your question, uh, first of all, uh, we do have an assembly uh, at, uh, in our village and uh, there are 20 members uh, and 19 of the members um, basically created a committee uh, that was going to look, it's a special committee uh, that was going to do uh, research or study uh, the uh, nuclear power issue. Uh, and uh, towards this committee, uh, four residents of the community um, basically uh, sent in uh, uh, submissions uh, for um, ideas uh, that they wanted the uh, committee to adopt. And out of these uh, four suggestions, uh, three of them uh, were basically um, that they wanted uh, the Tokai uh, power plant, number two power plant, uh, to not be to not be restarted and to if, uh, actually have it decommissioned uh, as quickly as possible. And one of uh, the submissions was that if uh, the safety of the facility could be confirmed, uh, then uh, it should be restarted. Uh, this committee took a year to deliberate uh, this matter, and as a result, uh, none of the four suggestions were adopted. Um, if we look at uh, the uh, assembly members in more detail, um, there are about eight members. There are eight members, I believe, who are, who are very clearly against uh, the uh, Tokai number two power plant are being restarted. They are wanting it to be decommissioned as quickly as possible. And there are 10 people uh, who uh, have the opposite position that they want it uh, to be restarted. And then there have, are two people who are kind of in the middle and have not decided. And this is kind of the power makeup or the, uh, the views uh, of the people inside uh, this committee, uh, excuse me, inside the assembly. And uh, although this uh, idea has been deliberated for, or this topic has been deliberated for the past year, none of them have changed uh, their positions. Uh, in response uh, to your question about uh, the people of the um, village, we have not done ourselves a survey to see what uh, the people think. However, Ibaragi University has done uh, a, a survey, and they have come with the result that a little over 50 percent, just a little bit over 50 percent, want uh, the Tokai number two power plants to not be restarted. 
If I could add another extra uh, point, yeah. which uh, this is a, a survey was conducted by the Ibaragi newspaper of all of the people in Ibaragi prefecture, mm -hmm. and the result was that, and this was done in July of this year, 59.5% uh, of the prefecture uh, respondents uh, were against the restarting of the plant. Um, um, thank you for mentioning my country, uh, who has to <laughs> apprehend the loss in the future battle on energy with Germany. We are used to lose in front of Germany, and they are used to also lose in front of us. So we'll see. <laughs> in 1999, there was an accident in Tokaimura that you mentioned indeed, and uh, I think a few years after that, if I remember well, some people from JOC have been arrested. Six or seven. Mm. Um, here we have Fukushima, who I think has also been um, told in the people as a problem born from um, negligence. There were many negligence in Fukushima um, ways to handle the, the crisis. So do you think that in these courses of years, in less than 10 years basically, or uh, nearly 10 years, we've had a lack of I mean, you mentioned universal values, right? I mean, do you think we have a lack of uh, proper justice in the case of uh, Fukushima? Do you think that something has turned wrong or different in Japan between JOC, Tokamura accident, and Fukushima? And would you like to see people from Fukushima, I mean, TEPCO people or government people be arrested? Um, yes, as you've pointed out, uh, the uh, JCO criticality accident did uh, result in uh, several people being um, pressed uh, with criminal charges. Uh, they, I think it was um, uh, criminal charges that uh, led to bodily harm and actual death. And uh, not only the JCO company, but also the head of the facility and also the person responsible for that section, uh, they were um, arraigned and I think they were given some kind of a, a, a penalty uh, that they had to pay. Um, in regard to uh, the, your question about whether um, people in Fukushima uh, might be arrested, um, I, I think that's basically what, what your question is. Um, I really cannot judge uh, this. It's a very difficult question. Um, but when I think about this situation, um, I am, have been told, and I, my understanding is that what happened with the Fukushima uh, number one uh, power plant, the Daiichi plant, could have happened uh, to other uh, plants in that uh, general region. In other words, all of the uh, reactors along the uh, coast uh, on, uh, in eastern Japan, and I'm talking about the three reactors in Onagawa plant, I'm talking about the six uh, reactors in the uh, Fukushima Daiichi and the four reactors in Daini, mm -hmm. and also the uh, Tokai number two plant. In other words, 14 uh, nuclear reactors in total. I'm told that if things had changed even a little bit, um, the same kind of horrible situation could have occurred in any of those uh, reactors. As a result, in other words, um, I think a meltdown could possibly have occurred for any of those reactors. And because of this, I think it might be very difficult to simply point to the Fukushima Daiichi plant and try to bring criminal charges against uh, just that facility. Hello, my name is Angela Kuba. Um, I would like to ask about the uh, physical security of the nuclear plants. Um, there have been reports that uh, North Koreans um, may target plants, uh, nuclear plants as an act of terrorism. Uh, do you think that unarmed, gar uh, unarmed guards are enough to ensure the sec security of these nuclear plants? Um, actually, thank you for your question. Um, sometimes um, I do hear uh, similar um, uh, questions. Uh, in other words, if armed guards uh, were uh, there, would uh, nuclear power plants be safe? Uh, some people say that we need a military uh, to defend uh, these um, uh, facilities. Uh, but I fundamentally think that uh, that's not the uh, answer, whether you have military or armed guards. I don't believe that they can actually protect uh, a nuclear power plant. Um, I, my whole point is that nuclear power plants themselves are dangerous. Uh, after all, if a missile were to be um, aimed at a nuclear power plant, I don't think we could prevent them. Um, I don't think, in spite of the fact there's a great deal of uh, discussion going on in Japan right now about how to hold down or prevent terrorism, I don't think you can really actually stop terrorism. And my whole point is that um, because nuclear power plants themselves are fundamentally dangerous and because there's nothing you can do to really protect them uh, if someone wants to do some harm, I think that's why we must get rid of nuclear power plants. We don't need them. Just simply having nuclear power plants means that you uh, incur a tremendous danger. You put yourself in a very dangerous situation. Khaldun mm. Ansari, Pan Orient News. Uh, I report for uh, some Arabic countries and Middle East countries. So we know that Mr. Shinzo Abe is promoting the export of nuclear power, mostly in the Middle East and some European countries. 
there are uh, in these countries there are no such earthquakes as in Japan, so it sounds it's safe. So do, do you think uh, do you trust that Japan should go to export such nuclear energy? Because you said uh, Japan is dangerous to the nuclear uh, plants because it's not because of the earthquakes. So do you, your people in, in your uh, city, do they support the exporting of the nuclear power to other countries that have no earthquakes history? Thank you. I uh, personally am completely against uh, the idea, uh, the fact that uh, Japan was the country that uh, was the source of this uh, Fukushima nuclear accident, was causing this uh, nuclear uh, power accident. Uh, and given the fact that uh, the reasons for this accident, the actual causes for the accident are still uh, unclear, uh, when we consider also that the people who were forced to evacuate or who suffered from the accident still have not been uh, duly taken care of, when we don't even know what is going to happen to this entire prefecture yet, um, I think it is extremely wrong uh, for uh, the Prime Minister and uh, other related people to go abroad and declare that uh, nuclear power plants uh, created by Japan are the safest in the world. I think that kind of activity uh, represents an immoral, unethical activity. I know that there is talk about um, exporting uh, nuclear power plant uh, technology to uh, some countries in the Middle East, Jordan, Kuwait, um, also uh, the former Eastern European nations such as Estonia. But uh, I. It goes back again to uh, qualifications. Um, I think that a, a nation such as Japan, which uh, was uh, the cause of this Fukushima uh, accident, uh, has does not have the qualification uh, to uh, is not qualified to export uh, this technology. And I think uh, this kind of shameful activity trying to export uh, this technology should be stopped at once. Uh, I'm Fujita from the um, Kokumin uh, Shimbun. Um, Basically, the President, um, uh, many people feel that uh, TEPCO uh, cannot be, um, uh, is not uh, capable of taking care of this accident, and uh, there are many voices raised that the uh, national government should step in with its enormous authority and might and abilities to take care of this issue. What do you think about um, national government with its enormous um, abilities and, and power stepping in uh, to something like this? Um, I believe that uh, in order to uh, bring the uh, nuclear accident at uh, Fukushima to a resolution, I believe that the country should uh, step in and the national government should step in. Uh, in fact, uh, the um, position of the uh, national government until now uh, that they have on the surface said everything will be delivered up to TEPCO. Um, I think uh, this, this is a, an attitude that does not reflect the actual truth. In other words, I believe um, these are false words that are being given. Uh, what I mean by this is that until now we have um, uh, had this fiction that there are these nine huge electric power country, uh, companies uh, throughout Japan who have the capability to uh, control and completely uh, be in charge of these uh, nuclear power plants. But since we have seen this terrible accident occurs, we know that uh, that is just a fiction. And uh, therefore, uh, considering the fact that uh, something uh, that this terrible has actually occurred, uh, taking into consideration also the fact that until now it has been the national policy, state policy, to promote nuclear power, I believe that uh, the only way to bring things to a resolution is for the nation national government to step in and uh, take care of this um, incident, accident. Um, I know that there are many consequences that will arise from the uh, national government stepping in in this way. Uh, the first thing that will have to be done is that uh, the system that is currently in place of supplying electricity uh, to uh, the entire nation, that will have to be completely redone, readjusted. And it will probably mean that TEPCO as a company will have to be dissolved or taken apart. And I think, however, that we do need a new organization, a new framework, so that uh, we can bring this uh, accident uh, to a resolution and that we can bring together, a build, or establish a new um, electrical uh, supply system. Um, I think as long as Japan maintains this fiction, which is basically a lie, uh, uh, I think it will simply uh, invite more and more mistrust uh, from not only the Japanese people, but from the world. Of course, when I consider what has been done in the past, the national government has had the state policy of promoting a nuclear power, and the way that they have promoted nuclear power has been uh, very similar to uh, the way um, a kind of a bad government would operate. In other words, they have used sort of military um, police state uh, methods uh, in order to promote a nuclear power, and I don't, I'm not in favor of that kind of action at all. But having said all of this, considering the severity of this accident, I think the state must step in. We just stay uh, for a couple more, more questions and allow me to uh, just ask a question here. Um, so I'll be asking one question, Mr. Markami. Um, 
I know that the, uh, the decommissioning process of the uh, Tokai Daiichi, Tokai, Tokai number one uh, power, power plant is taking place since 1998, since it, it is the oldest uh, uh, nuclear station. Um, it, uh, it will be the first decommissioning of the nuclear plant in Japan. And I understand that according to the schedule, the disassembling of the uh, reactor is supposed to begin next year, uh, 2014. And uh, my question is, uh, is it uh, on schedule? And if it is facing uh, some difficulties, what is it? What is it that the decommissioning uh, does not uh, move forward as scheduled? And also um, a similar question. On uh, Tokai number two, Tokai Daini, um, a power plant. I know it is uh, stalled, but uh, uh, what's the status of its uh, spent uh, nuclear fuel pool? Uh, I know some 320 tons of uh, spent uh, fuel is stored, but uh, is it uh, how is it is, is it in a safe uh, uh, state? And uh, if you can just give me the, what the sta uh, status of the spent nuclear fuel is on the Tokai Daini. Thank you. <coughs> Got your uh, uh, question. Uh, first of all, uh, in regard to the uh, first uh, reactor or first pl uh, um, plant, we don't refer to it as number one. We just say the Tokai um, power plant. Um, it is. Uh, we uh, first of all, uh, it is uh, in the process of being dismantled, uh, and according to the schedule, uh, the dismantling of the reactor core will not um, begin until two or three years uh, from now. Having said this, however, uh, in um, actuality, in, in, uh, the actual fact is that we cannot really start uh, the um, dismantling process because uh, although the reactor core is considered to be um, the, the, the actual category is low-level um, radioactive uh, waste materials. Still, uh, it's referred to as L1. That's its category. It's a low-level radiation. But still, um, the requirement is that it must be buried underneath the ground uh, at least 50 meters underneath the ground. And the reason we can't, uh, the dismantling process cannot begin is that uh, no place has been found uh, where this uh, radioactive waste material can be buried. Uh, so uh, unless a per place can be uh, secured, uh, this dismantling of the reactor core cannot begin at all, even though the schedule is several years from now. Uh, in regard to the Tokai uh, number two uh, plant, uh, in regard to your question about the spent uh, fuel, there are about 2,200 fuel assemblies uh, that are already in the pool itself. And separately from that, I think there are over 920 fuel assemblies that are what we are uh, referred to as dry cask. They're not in water, but they're being stored uh, in a dry manner. Uh, and uh, in regard to the uh, spent fuel assemblies in the pool, um, this uh, cooling process is, of course, always taking place. And I've been told that the cooling process is being uh, made even more redundant and is being made more secure and is being made more safe than before. Um, any more question? Your last. So the fishery in uh, Fukushima is very uh, now affected by the contamination from the sea. What is the, uh, with the fishery industry in Ibaraki -Kin as a neighbor a prefecture? <coughs> I cannot answer in great detail, but um, as you know, uh, the situation uh, in Fukushima is that uh, all fish uh, basically base, uh, uh, is being um, not ca caught. Uh, however, uh, in Ibaragi, the situation is not quite so dire. I don't have all of the details, but um, I've heard that mm. of the fish, it depends on the species of fish, uh, mm. but um, depending on mm. but the uh, numbers of species uh, which were banned uh, are decreasing in number. In other words, more and more fishing uh, is starting to uh, come back for Ibaragi Prefecture. Mm. The second round, so what, when did you go first and then Joel will wrap that up? I'm Henry Marini, and I'm a retired businessman. Um, <clears throat> I understand that the um, uh, LDP was quite generous in contributions it would make to local uh, prefectures that would accept nuclear plants. Including that kind of uh, income stream, um, what part of Tokai Mura's economy what percentage of its economy is derived from nuclear generation uh, activities? 
Tokaimura does not depend entirely uh, uh, on uh, nuclear power plants for all of its subsidies and for all of its tax income, but um, as has been mentioned before, uh, mm. we certainly uh, are very, very much uh, dependent on, uh, in particular, the JEA, the Japan Atomic Energy um, Agency, for a great deal of our um, tax income and for a great deal of our employment. As was mentioned earlier, uh, and nuclear power-related uh, income uh, accounts for about one-third of our entire budget. Uh, and uh, having said all of this, however, um, I would also like to point out that there are other related um, sources of income. Uh, for example, TEPCO uh, has a big thermal uh, power plant uh, in Tokaimura, and that is also a huge um, tax uh, income source. Um, the first... Um, facility uh, in this power plant uh, began running uh, about five years ago, it went into operation uh, five years ago, and it produces one million, million kilowatts. Uh, the second facility um, will start up in um, December of this year, and it will also uh, produce one million kilowatts. And there is also a uh, uh, plan decided uh, to uh, construct a third facility, uh, which will be of similar size. Uh, because of this dependency that we have on nuclear power plants and also um, other companies related to nuclear power plants, uh, some people ask us, what will happen to you if you uh, completely sever your uh, relationship with uh, nuclear energy? And uh, I uh, always respond by saying that when we consider what horrible thing has happened with the Fukushima accident, I think that um, all of us are in the same position. And what I mean by that is that there are, in, throughout Japan, 17 different localities that have nuclear uh, power plant uh, facilities. Um, I say to, I think that all of us should think about how we can extricate ourselves from our current situation, our current dependency on nuclear energy as quickly as possible, because uh, the dreams or the goals that we might have had um, a little while ago, which was that you could build a thriving economy based on a nuclear power and related businesses, that dream no longer uh, can be a reality. And the faster you can come to grips with this new reality is better. It's better for the uh, community. Thank you. Jean Lejean d'RTL again. Um, after all, you are very um, lucky. You are the only city who has known criticality here in the recent history. I mean lucky, in, of course, as a sarcastic comment. Um, what is it, because you made accusation, you said that uh, a nation like Japan is not qualified to get a nuclear power plant. Uh, you also said that there is here a, a hazardous approach to deal with accidents. I mean, what is it that is your experience that has caused um, the, your catastrophe in, in Tokaimura, the fission, the criticality, the accident was very serious, first time ever it happened. Might happen, might happening in Fukushima right now. We don't know what's going on exactly. What do you think that is wrong with the regulation authorities? What do you think that is wrong with the, the ministries, the authorities, the government? What do you think is wrong with this country into uh, succeeding into having um, more any assistance and, and relief in, in this crisis here? And do you think it should call for international aid eventually? Um, I guess you're basically asking you a question about um, what are the fundamental reasons for um, all of these failures that we're seeing uh, in regard to nuclear energy use uh, in Japan. Um, I believe that when we look at nuclear power plants, we, we look at um, the use of nuclear energy. I think the fundamental problem for all of this is that uh, Japan did not develop uh, nuclear technology, uh, the science of nuclear technology on its own, but rather basically imported it um, as a package deal from the United States. And over time, although Japan has uh, been using and operating uh, uh, nuclear power plants and it has been using nuclear energy, uh, they have not really done fundamental scientific research on their own, and so they've basically made minor adjustments to this technology that they have imported from uh, abroad. Um, compounding uh, the difficulty was the fact that uh, nuclear energy uh, was something that was very necessary for Japanese growth uh, at that time. And so uh, because uh, the uh, positive aspects of nuclear energy, uh, the amount of electricity it could produce cheaply, was uh, considered to be so important, the other side, which was how to control and regulate the very dangerous aspects of nuclear energy, was not given uh, enough thought and uh, enough time. I think that is the fundamental um, reasons that we're seeing uh, these problems. In fact, when the JCO criticality accident occurred, I pointed out to the authorities that there was a fundamental uh, problem uh, in the system for regulating um, nuclear power plants because uh, in the same organization you had uh, the promotion and the regulation uh, of uh, nuclear energy. But again, this goes back to the fact that uh, at that time in Japan, uh, economic growth was considered to be the greatest goal and the uh, nuclear energy was considered to be something that had to be necessary in order to promote and make possible uh, economic growth. 
And so in order to achieve uh, economic growth and to be able to use uh, nuclear energy, um, a lid, basically, or a cap was put onto the dangers of uh, mm -hmm. nuclear energy. And I think that lid was something that we now label the safety myth the myth of safety that nuclear energy can be controlled. So this was a kind of um, mental or psychological uh, makeup of society at that time. That was the system that was in place in society at that time, and I think that has continued until the present time and basically led to the Fukushima accident. You can, you can. Thank you very much, uh, Mia Murakami. And uh, this will wrap up the, uh, the press conference by the Mia of uh, Tokai Village. And thank you for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And uh, uh, as a custom, uh, we like to present um, Mia Murakami the one year honorary uh, guest membership. Please come and have a drink with us. Thank you.